Uh, look at at uh, verse 16. You'll be betrayed even by parents and brothers, relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. Wow. Hey, this is pre-tribulation, by the way. This is what the church has gone through. This is, the, this is what's going on everywhere outside of our country, basically, in the world. People are being betrayed. They're being sold out. They are being horrifically... I mean, read the Voice of the Martyrs publication. It's free, and it's from right up the road. And you can get it from right... I mean, it's a local ministry in Bartlesville. Just read one edition and see the scars, the burns, the beatings that believers are getting because... Verse 16 is going on right now. They're betrayed by parents and brothers and relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You know what the fourth point of our survival guide is? I will purpose to never quit, even when those closest to me fail me. You can pour your life into someone for a long time, and they can completely turn, betray you. We have to purpose. We're going to follow the Lord. Lord, in the parallel passage in mark 13 he says you'll be hated of all for my name's sake wow all that are godly are going to suffer that's the promise of the word of god so i'm not going to quit look at verse 17 he says you'll be hated by all for my name's sake i expect fifth point life is going to be hard and full of trials right now it doesn't harm us to be a christian when i used to work in eastern europe and take bibles in in the 70s and the early 80s a christian living in eastern europe behind the the iron curtain could not go to the best university unless they stepped away from their testimony of faith in christ in fact you couldn't go to any professional you could not get any doctoral level training as a born-again christian in the soviet bloc and in the the uh, eastern europe European nations you consciously when you came to Christ lost your privilege of advancement now let me ask you if the big schools say now we don't want any of this this exclusivism unless you will say there are many ways and not just Christ unless you'll say that that it's okay to be homosexual and that that a murder of the unborn is okay and they start tagging doctrines that the bible is clear on and they say you're going to have to not believe those things to come into our higher education all of a sudden we're going to realize that there is a cost you know right now you can be successful in america and a christian but would you still want to be a christian if you couldn't be successful if you couldn't send your children to good schools if your children had to be ditch diggers, that's what the Christians were in Eastern Europe. All the believers I met with and delivered Bibles to were brilliant people that had lowly laboring jobs in the Soviet structure because they were believers. And they had calloused hands and they had bent backs and they had brilliant minds and full hearts and they said we take joyfully the spoiling of our goods because we belong to Christ what's the survival guide I will expect that life is going to be hard and full of trials I'm going to expect that I'm not going to think that I'm going to have an easy life and that I'm going to have a secure life and I'm going to have financial independence and financial security that's why the church was so strong in Eastern Europe and the Soviet bloc nations do you know why they paid a price to be believers 